Winston-Salem, North Carolina celebrates American history on a daily basis. It's also a huge part of NASCAR history and its future when the K&N Pro Series comes to Bowman Gray Stadium. Bowman Gray Stadium opened for racing in 1946 and from the late 50s to the early 1970s, it hosted 29 races in what is now called Sprint Cup. Today it still has that you gotta see this appeal. Drivers like Kenzie Rustin will put on a show tonight after signing a few autographs. And the Grand Marshal, Leonard Wood, who won here four times with his brother Glenn, both are in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. What an appropriate way to welcome you then to the NASCAR Hall of Fame 150 here at the Bowman Gray Stadium. I'm Dave Burns along with Parker Kligerman, Derek Pernasiglio, joined us in a moment. A huge crowd is packed out just like every week here at Bowman Gray Stadium, and they've come on a good night, perfect weather for racing. And for most of these teams, it is a home game. Bowman Gray Stadium in Winston-Salem, just 80 miles from Charlotte, North Carolina. Great place to see a race on a quarter mile track. As far as the points go, William Byron has set a torrid pace, Parker. He's got two wins already, and his worst finish is seventh. Yeah, you know who stands out to me is that 51 car of Dalton Sargent. He's had two bad runs lately that have put him all the way back in eighth. Let's go to Derek Pertisiglio. Thank you very much, Dave, and welcome to the Bowman Gray Stadium. Scott Heckert starts on the pole in the number 34 machine. It'll be his fourth career pole. Scott, four poles, but what's it going to take to finally get a win on an oval? Well, I think we put ourselves in a pretty good spot here. Uh, just got to stay out front, you know, stay on the inside line and just lead every lap. Track position tonight is key, and you've got it. What does it take to stay out front and keep everyone behind you? Yeah, I just got to have a car that rotates the center well, uh, make sure no one moves you out the way, and uh, just try to gain a gap on the guys behind you. Well, this car was built 11 years ago, and Scott Heckert hopes to take it to victory lane tonight. I talked to Scott, and actually the last couple changes they made in practice made it good enough to get the pole. Bowman Gray Stadium is unique. Let's let Dalton Sargent take us around for a couple of laps. Yeah, Dave, here we are on board of Dalton Sargent, heading down into turn one. Really a finesse racetrack. You've got to let it roll through the center and then have good drive off. You have to also have patience at a racetrack this small. I relate this racetrack as you see the driver in there. Just do little tiny movements. That's the patience and smoothness you need here. This is basically like running on a high school running track outside your high school growing up. This is a very tiny racetrack that drivers have to keep their wits about them. You might be able to get close to that curb right there, but don't use too much of it as we come here to start finish line on board of Dalton Sergeant. Too much of anything could be a bad thing, especially on a short quarter mile. Well, Rev Racing has four entries in the race tonight. Any one of them can help make up NASCAR's next generation, including the pride of Rio Rancho, New Mexico. I'm Devin Amos, I'm 23 years old. I'm from Rio Rancho, New Mexico, and I drive the number six Toyota Camry for Rev Racing. The first car I drove was a quarter midget when I was 12. And when I was 15, I drove a four-cylinder class. Last year, I raced late models, and then this year, I'm in the K&N cars. It's been huge. I wouldn't be able to be here without the NASCAR Drive for Diversity program. They've just been so helpful with developing me and, and continue to help me get to the next level, and, and I'm just so thankful. I'd like to finish all the laps this year. You know, just finish all the laps, and hopefully we can just keep advancing, progressing, and, you know, top 10, top 5, and hopefully get some wins. Well, Dave, you know, one thing that's really interesting about Devin Amos there is that he actually had to stop racing around 14 or 15, took a break, went and got a job around age 18, and paid for himself to go race those first couple of years to get to the Drive for Diversity program. What an awesome story. You gotta find a way to get into the show. Hey, speaking of shows, the fans here have seen a full night of racing here at Bowman Gray Stadium as they usually do. Here's Derek with more. Guys, one of the things to remember tonight is they just ran a 100 lap modified race here at the stadium. And as I walk, my feet are sticking to the pavement of the track. That means it may be treacherous in the first couple of laps here at the stadium because there's a lot of Hoosier rubber laid down on the surface of the track and the K&N cars run good years, so the compounds don't match. You may see some drivers slipping and sliding before we hit the halfway point of this race. And that's a great point, Derek. As a driver, in those first couple laps, you need to feel that out, whether it's added grip or taking it away. Just one more reason why fans and maybe drivers alike have given the nickname the Madhouse to Bowman Gray Stadium. Daniel Suarez found out in 2012 what it can do to you. 
Brett Moffitt and Darrell Wallace Jr., they got into the, that same night and noticed the track official, how yeah, they wear badges here. Brian Ortiz goes around off the bumper of the eventual winner, Ben Kennedy, and Brennan Newberry took a ride to the infield last year. They still play football there. Winston-Salem State plays their home games right here in Bowman Gray Stadium. What a great place. Back with you at Bowman Gray Stadium. The field is underway behind the pace car in this stadium, which is a football field, which is also a great racetrack, Parker. Yeah, this is a quarter mile flat track, absolutely no banking. And how fitting for it to be the Hall of Fame 150 when you've had drivers who are in the Hall of Fame racing here, all the way to the drivers we see here today, trying to make it to the Hall of Fame one day. Glenn Wood has four wins here. Richard Petty has three. Bobby Allison has won here. It's a who's who list in NASCAR. So speaking of who's who, who might be next? Derek Pernasiglio has a driver he wants you to keep a watch on tonight. Even though he's starting deep in the field, keep an eye on that number three of Kaz Grala. He's in the top ten in points right now. He tested here on Wednesday, and when they did test, they said they felt really good. They felt really confident going into tonight's race. But the car started to go away a little bit. They had a little bit of a stagger problem. That stagger problem made him start 13th, but he'll be one to watch when we go green. Dave, you know what's interesting about that is that normally that means that a driver had too little stagger. He couldn't turn through the center of the racetrack, especially at a flat racetrack like Roman Gray. Let's take a look at the entire starting grid. Scott Heckert, his fourth career pole in the K&N Pro Series. The highest qualifying rev racing car, the 42 of Jay Beasley, inside row number four. A couple drivers to watch tonight in their hometown race. That's the 49 of John Holloman. The 44 of Dylan Bassett and the 04 of Ronnie Bassett Jr. all would have hoped to have a better qualifying from their home crowd, and they've got a lot of work cut out for them tonight. It's a hard place to pass. Heckert and Haley have the best seats as we go green at Bowman Gray. Heckert with the early jump on his teammate as they go through one and two. Absolutely, Dave. That dominant line there right on the bottom, right next to that curb. It's going to be the place to be all night long. Another teammate, Dalton Sargent, in the 51. He moves through and immediately takes second. Yeah, those H. Scott Motorsport cars are really impressive here tonight. They're really just cutting to the center, even in this early couple laps. You can see how they just have a ton of speed rolling right on that bottom. They had four of the top five qualifying spots. The other one to that 22 of Austin Hill. He's now going to move inside Haley as well. And Haley, after starting on the outside of the front row, he is all the way back to fourth and maybe worse. Yeah, there he slots in. Now he gets to the bottom. That's exactly what you need to do. Be patient. Get yourself on the bottom and start moving forward. Protect your race car and protecting your tires at this flat, flat racetrack. Teammate William Byron there in the blue and white nine, giving him a little bit of a break there as Byron is now back in the fifth position. You see the leaders pulling away just a little bit. Heckert and Sargent have opened up a gap. Absolutely. One thing to watch here is the cars that get down into the corner really easily and, and are able to almost not have the front slam too hard. If they slam the front too hard, they can really abuse the front end of these race cars and over the course of a long run, will start to get tight. And when you get tight at a place like this, you're going to go backwards. Austin Hill in the white and orange 22. He's now working to catch those leaders, having made his way through. Single file all the way around Bowman Gray. We're going to see a lot of that tonight, Parker. What's the challenge for these drivers? Well, the biggest thing right here, especially this early in the race, is getting in a rhythm. You hear it a lot, but when you get in a rhythm, suddenly the motor, it has it builds up the RPMs as it goes down the RPMs. You could drive it with your eyes closed sometimes when you get in such a good rhythm. Unlike his teammate there, Dalton Sargent, he's having to focus on what Scott's doing, but also make sure to drive his own race, Dave. You also see their teammate, William Byron, in the nine. He's focused on the back bumper of J.J. Haley. Both of those drivers, young men. Haley, a sophomore in high school, 16-year-old. William Byron, he's 17 as well. Both getting experience here in the K&N Pro Series. Yeah, and for J.J. Haley there in the five, running so close to Austin Hill in the 22, he needs to protect the heat of his race car. What I mean by that is he doesn't want to let too much heat get in the brakes, too much heat get on the front tires, running that close to Austin. It's something that's very tough for race car drivers to almost back off and just protect your race car. I can't emphasize it enough. Patience in protecting your race car here will pay off dividends come the end of the race. I'm getting the idea they're using brakes in every single lap here <laughs> at the Bowman Gray Stadium. Derek?
23-year-old Jay Beasley. The bull ring at Vegas, good comparison here, you think, Parker? Absolutely. That's another very small, tight racetrack, as you heard Derek say. I mean, how loud is it down there? You can barely hear Derek <laughs> over the engine noise at this place. Nothing like short track racing, whether you're driving in it, whether you're working in the broadcast booth. Rico Abreu, he's finding out about short track racing in that 98 car, the Chili Bowl winner in open wheel, now making his transition to stock cars, currently running in the eighth position. Yeah, and when I look at his car right now, I saw him just get a little bit off that curb down there in one and two, and what that tells me is he might just be a little bit tight, and that's something for Rico to work on in these big, heavy cars coming from the midgets, is that you have to finesse the race car. You've got to let it do its thing and not try to be ahead of the race car. It's going to be ahead of you all the time. We talked about what a throwback place Bowen Gray Stadium is. How about that throwback paint scheme on Kenzie Rustin's car? The blue and yellow Sunoco colors. Love that. How fitting in the Hall of Fame 150 to have a car like that looking that great. Really nice under the lights here at Bowman Gray. You see Kyle Benjamin now in that 27 fighting with Kaz Grawler. Remember, Kaz was our driver to watch per Derek at the start of the race. We'll keep our eye on him. Remember, he started 13th trying to work his way forward. Yeah, and he had that stagger problem. And you see, get a little bit into Kyle Benjamin there, and that's what you gotta do here, is you gotta use that bumper sometimes just in, and I think there's a difference between wrecking a guy using your bumper and just moving him and giving a little nudge and get under them and go on forward. And some, hopefully the patience pays off and the other driver plays with you nicely and you're able to move on and, and go on the race. No question, Kyle knows he's there now, right? And he will now, <laughs> definitely, if his spotter hasn't told him already. 12th place being contended by Nick Drake and Devin Amos, who you met at the beginning of our show. And right behind Devin, his, uh, the, the, the one car being driven this week by Mason Mitchell, the ARCA champion. So Shiki Hitori getting that one car back in the Canon Pro Series East. Mason Mitchell at the wheel. Yeah, actually, you just saw him hit the curb there. We don't want to do that tonight. I, I can't stress enough as well is that that curb can be very inviting to maybe cut the race. Ooh, we've got a little trouble here at the 31. David Garbo Jr. down to the inside, and he's got damage on that right front. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what happened here. Maybe a little bit of product of that, the bottom of that car getting in the grass, which can happen here and, and really destroy that front end and, and hopefully it doesn't get too much in that right front looks like they have enough clearance so he should be able to continue garbo qualified 17th out of 21 the connecticut driver with more trouble now as he's getting passed by the lead group yeah and he just needs to be smart here now, you know at the end of the day he's probably not in it anymore a small track like this to be already going a lap down this early in the race just needs to be smart get out of the way and let the leaders race the race there are the leaders. Scott Hecker down with a little bit of a gap over Dalton Sargent as they get ready to put a lap on Justin LeDuc. We've got Kaz Grala finally getting under Kyle Benjamin here. And now Kyle needs to be smart because he's about to go under what we call the freight train, which you see the 15 get by. And we've got another car, Devin Amos, going under him. That happens here. He needs to be patient once again. We're really early in this race. Find a way to slot back into that bottom side and start moving forward. We know he has a good race car. Kyle Benjamin caught on the high side and going the wrong direction here at Bowman Gray as Scott Heckert continues to lead. Back with you at Bowman Gray Stadium, the NASCAR Hall of Fame 150 underway. That guy, Scott Heckert in the 34, he's led every lap from the pole. Yeah, Dave, he's had a dominant time here. He's actually negotiated traffic so well, beating and putting a ton of time between himself and his teammate Dalton Sargent, and that's what's really impressive in that 34 car. You see Ronnie Bassett Jr. in that 04. He's caught on the outside now as the leaders go by. He's hoping for a much better night here at his home track. Sergeant in the 51, Austin Hill in the 22, Haley in the 5. Yeah, and these guys, you know, the leader there, Scott Hecker's getting away from them, but they're in a good position. Look, this place is historically going to cause caution, so if they just stay, stay patient again, as I said before, they stay easy there. We're working together through traffic, not rough their car up too much in traffic, although that's, that's easier said than done sometimes, Dave. We you might find yourself back in contention. Yeah, exactly. We mentioned at the top of the show, Dalton Sargent in eighth position in the points now after a couple of bad runs. He hasn't won yet this year in the East Series. Did have that West Series win at Kern County, but that 51 driver looking to get his program back together tonight. Yeah, and the 22 there of Austin Hill has actually caught up to the 51 of Dalton Sargent from the beginning of this race. And that just tells me that he's been able to get through traffic a little bit better. Maybe his car's coming to him, turning better in the center. He's really tight on that inside line. He doesn't have too much brake glow. So I, I look at that 22 as being someone that might come really on in the late stage of this race. The Winston, Georgia driver having a good run in Winston-Salem, North Carolina tonight. The 22 of Austin Hill currently in third, fourth place to J.J. Haley. Mentioned him before. 
Yeah, absolutely. And he, you know, in his position right now, those three are very close together. I think they're all in a really good position now. Being in the top five at this racetrack is a place to be. Because if you're in the top five and you can get a restart where you're on the bottom line, you might just have a chance to get yourself up towards the lead. And Haley's kind of settling down after a hard start to the season. Had a couple of bad races and then a ninth place at Bristol and a sixth place at Iowa. So the five driver bringing his program back to the front as well. Yeah, that trend is heading in the right direction. That's what you want to see as a race team and a driver is going in the positive direction finishes wise. Ooh, we've got a little bit of a tussle right going in front of the leader, front. right? Exactly. He needs to be smart here. Let those two play it out and then go by. He's got a huge lead. Derek Pernasiglio. a good point Derek and we see the 34 there Scott Hecker <laughs> using that older metal body uh -huh. to his advantage to move some of the lappers out of the way and that's definitely something to look at for these guys is that that composite body was faster at Iowa on the bigger tracks maybe create a little bit more downforce and that extra travel is very big with coal bonding but here at the short track you want the toughest thing you have in your arsenal to come out here and, and bump and grind with the best one. Hecker got by local driver John Hollum in the fourth there in that 49 car next is Colin Cabry in the two those two were going at it, but the leader found a way by the first one. Now Dalton Sargent in that 51, he's got to work the traffic as well. Yeah, and he's, you know, he's been smart, and so the, fifth, or the 51 there has crept up to the 34, and that's what's going to happen throughout this race, especially how often they're going to run in the lappers. It's going to have that accordion effect. You know, 34, Scott Hecker's going to get a little bit of a big lead. He'll get caught up in traffic. The 51 will get through traffic a little better and catch up to him. We just need to see that accordion play out all night. And what about the speed, Parker, at this point? It looks like they're pretty evenly matched, and save for a, a bumper event, they really are running together, the 34 and the 51. Absolutely. The teammates of the H. Scott Motorsports cars, you know, they probably have similar setups, or the teams have worked together through practice and qualifying to get to this point. And so now it's down to the drivers making the right decisions, protecting the race car, maybe, you know, adjusting the brake bias a little bit. That can affect the race car to short track a lot. Those are the little things that are going to make a big difference come the end of this race. As you see, Scott Hecker going to the outside of the two car here, and that allows that 51 to get that accordion effect again, get up to him, he'll get around the two a little quicker, and that's just gonna happen all night, and as long as they're smart about that, they'll uh, they'll definitely sort it out coming in. You saw some good sportsmanship there, the 49 of Holloman moved over, let the leaders get by, as did the two of Cabri, now they get back to their battle, as Austin Hill pulls up on him. Yeah, and this is where the 22, they, Whoa! Oh, gosh. You know, yeah, back using, to their battle. They're using that metal body again there <laughs> to their advantage. And, and this is just, this is short track racing. This is what you see all night long. And if, if as a driver, it's totally normal. You just don't want to see one of those cars suddenly go sideways in front of you and end your night. And Hallman is no stranger to this track. He runs here weekly, has won in the Street Stock Series here. So he understands how to get around Bowman Gray Stadium. Sometimes that means pushing and shoving. <laughs> Absolutely. He's using it to his, his experience to his advantage. Oh, we'll get into the 22 of Austin Hill there. And, he, you know, as a lapper, it's, that's not, that's a bit frowned upon, especially if I'm an Austin's edition. I'm a little upset about that one. You could easily cut my tire down or, you know, upset my race car that I spun out and took out a great running position in third there. No harm, no foul. That new bodied number 22 moves on through. J.J. Haley will get by Holloman. And here comes William Byron, the two-time winner already this year in that nine car. He won at Greenville Pickens Speedway. He was uh, the class winner, if you will, at Iowa, running second to Brandon McReynolds of the West. The nine of William Byron will try to find a way forward now. Yeah, and he's having a smart race. That's what he needs to do. He's, he's having an excellent season so far. Oh, and... The 49 there of Josh Hellman is, uh, is having kind of the eventful couple laps there, Dave. Jay Beasley trying to get to his outside. Now Greg Galding stuck behind him. There's the 98 of Abreu. Kaz Grala in the three pulling up as well. Battle for six is between Beasley and Galding. We're seeing a lot of guys being able to actually use that outside line through these lappers. We saw Scott Hecker do it. We're seeing Beasley try and work that outside line as a 49 is going to spin right in front of him. Able to negotiate well and oof, a little bit of damage there on Rico's car. And that brings out the caution. John Holloman the fourth. 
going around in turn number four. The field will come to the caution flag now. We mentioned Byron, of course, he is the championship leader at this point by some 14 points going into the night over Austin Hill and Kyle Benjamin. So all those positions, like you talked about, Parker, important to the driver of the nine. Absolutely, and a points battle over the entire season, that's what matters, is the nights like this where maybe you don't have a winning car, you go out there and get the best finish possible, sometimes meaning just a top five. Take a look and see if we can see what happened to Holloman. I think we've seen it already. Let's see it again. Yeah, I think you, uh, you see a little bit of impatience between the, the guys that are coming around and lapping Holman here. Beasley was trying to use the outside. He had Galling coming the inside of him. He, the 49 was slipping up and it seemed like maybe at that point all kind of ended up in the same piece of racetrack and the 49 went around. So try as he might, John Holman just cannot stay out of the way of these faster leaders and he goes for a spin. There's Jay Beasley, the driver that got into the back of him. NASCAR doesn't have a send you to the back rule. Now they weren't racing for position, but they don't have that rule where they send you to the back. No, no, and especially at a place like this, that's gonna happen. I mean, at the end of the day, the John Holloman there in the 49 really should have been trying to give those guys more room than he was. I know he's trying to race his race, but at the same time, these guys are up front and they're also racing very intensely at the front. And, and when you end up too wide and one guy slower in front, you're gonna end up with a spin. And the caution, of course, gives a little opportunity for the fans to do what they do. That's to eat that good looks food, good, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This is Bowman Gray Stadium. I'm Dave Burns. He's Parker Kligerman. Derek Pernasiglio is patrolling the infield. There's not really a pit road here tonight. 150 laps in the NASCAR Hall of Fame 150. There will be no halfway break. And so far, Scott Heckert from the pole has led every lap. As we come to the restart, he's got the point again. This time, Dalton Sargent with a little better restart, but Heckert squeezes free down the backstretch. Yeah, it's a good restart by 51 of Dalton Sargent there, hanging on the outside of the 34 Scott. But how easy, how quickly, and how good his restart was, he was able to get to the bottom, and that's what's most important here. J.J. Haley in the five, trying to not get hung up again as he did on one of the previous restarts, battling side by side with Austin Hill. Yeah, this is where Austin Hill is maybe going to make his race car a little wider than most times. He's going to try and slide out a little bit and force that five to the farther outside where he has zero grip and eventually take that position in third. Teammate William Byron in the nine gave him a little bit of a break earlier, did he, to Haley, and uh, caution comes out as they battle for that position. I saw some dust fly down there in turns one and two. Yeah, we've got a bit of a melee down here. There See, it is. The three of Kaz Grala, the 98 of Rico Abreu, who was involved a little bit in that last instant going through the grass. He dented the front of his uh, composite body there. Nick Drake also involved in the 15 car, so a three-car pileup in turn number one brings us to a halt again. And that's another one of those composite bodies, and you can see how it just crumpled up on the front end. The good thing is I see a lot of separation between the tire and the body in these, these cars, and so that means you can dent them up a little bit. As long as they're not touching the tire, it's fair game here. So, caution on the speedway. Scott Heckert is your leader. Do Dalton Sargent and Austin Hill have anything for the driver of the 34? with you in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the site of tonight's K&M Pro Series East Race. The fans have come out and packed this stadium as they often do on a weekly basis. They've come for the Touring Series tonight, k and Pro, and Scott Heckert has been the class of the field since qualifying. He was on the pole and has led every lap. John Holloman kept trying to get out of the way, but finally was pushed aside by Jay Beasley. And this three-car pileup has brought out our most recent caution, Abreu, Grala, and Drake, all able to get going again and rejoin this field. Leaders are behind the pace car. Heckert and Dalton Sargent, as it's been all night, will lead the field back to green on this flat quarter mile. Really strong restart by the 34 of Scott Heckert there. Really got a big jump on the 51 coming off two. He's gonna keep the lead once again. And a car length or two. So Sargent, not as good as the last restart, that side-by-side -side battle between Haley and the 22 of Austin Hill is now gonna be won by Hill, so they separate early. Yeah, those two have just been going at it all night. They can't seem to get away from each other. But uh, definitely got single file a little quicker this time. And maybe they'll keep up with the leaders a little bit better. Side-by-side -side battle here. Greg Galding just squeezing by Jay Beasley. And Jay Beasley also squeezed right in front of Devin Amos there. Really tight. I think they even touched a little bit. So that's just product of, once again, short track racing. Galding took sixth. Beasley back to seventh. Amos in eighth. Nick Drake ninth. This is the battle for tenth between Kenzie Rustin and on the inside, Mason Mitchell. He's got the spot. And that's really using the bumper there. Just driving right in the door of Kenzie Rustin and, and moving around the way. And, hey, he got the pass done. No harm, no foul. 
The green and white 44 of Dylan Bassett you see there stuck on the outside. Kyle Benjamin to the inside. That is the battle for 15th. Yeah, Kyle Benjamin making a run back to the field here after a couple of tough incidents. And, you know, maybe we'll see the real speed of this race car if he can drive back up to the field and get in the top 10. Your leaders have pulled away just a bit, and Heckert just a little bit of light now between himself and Dalton Sargent. Yeah, that 34 car is just absolutely dominant tonight. Actually, an interesting story about that 34 car is that chassis was an original DEI Dale Jr. Xfinity chassis. It went over to their uh, K&N Series team where Trevor Bain won in it. Uh, other drivers like Ryan Truex have won in it. Brett Moffitt has won two races in that chassis. And the body on it was actually out in the shop of H. Scott Motorsports in the parking lot for 30 days or so. So it's definitely an interesting race car to have brought to this racetrack. Cars have stories in this sport, don't they? They do, they do. They're, they're, you know, they kind of have a soul sometimes, a lot of drivers. The soul of the 34, a leading and winning race car, certainly paying off for Scott Hecker tonight as he continues on the point. This is the battle back behind he and Dalton Sargent for third. Austin Hill, J.J. Haley, William Byron, and Greg Galding. Galding, actually a good run for him after starting ninth, has found his way back up toward the lead pack. Yeah, and he's actually got a little bit of damage there on the rear bumper, which normally means you're going backwards, but he seems to be going forward. So I think he's got a good race car there. He's, he's obviously getting through the center well, which we've talked about a lot is the most important thing. And just see how he really actually is using that curve on the inside, which can be dangerous with abusing that left front tire, maybe even possibly cutting it. But it's working for him right now, and, and hopefully he uh, can figure that out, take care of that left front, and keep moving forward. And you got to take care. There will not be a tire change unless you're in real trouble here, and then you probably won't win. There will not be a fuel stop. These guys are going the distance, 150 laps on a quarter mile. And uh, the way that it's measured, it only comes out to about 38 miles, Parker. This is a short distance race. Oh, gosh, yeah, very short race time as well. But actually, what I'm seeing here of this train is that Austin Hill is maybe just not as good as he was before that caution. Whatever reason, he might be a little bit tight or not getting off the corner as well, but he's causing a little bit of backup in this. And sometimes he needs to be careful because those guys can get very impatient behind him and suddenly he might find himself spun around. J.J. Haley in the five will consider his options. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, I think so. And as he gets to the inside here, this is a perfect opportunity to strike. He gets it done. That's a really good pass. Using the, the lap car there as a pick, got to the front. Without any contact, a good move by J.J. Haley in the five car. Let's go down to pit lane and Derek. Derek, thanks, and I think, Parker, we can really see what you were pointing out. He's not the fastest car in that group, and they're all trying to get by. A couple have already. Yeah, and the second J.J. Haley in the five got by him, he's he's darted away. So that really tells you Austin Hill is struggling that 22. You know, maybe it's just a product if he's abused that right front or, or he's actually burnt off the right rear and is unable to get the throttle down. There's a couple things that can happen here, but most important is that he's just not as fast. He's holding those guys up, and they're going to find a way past him. That's for sure. And championship leader William Byron in the nine, he's not going to take any chances and ruin his night and his chances to uh, maintain that points lead. Scott Hecker still at the point, entered tonight fourth in the championship. Not that many points behind William Byron. A victory could go a long way toward his championship hopes, Parker. Absolutely. A victory can always go a long way. As we say in racing, winning fixes everything. And I think tonight, <laughs> especially winning at a place as historic as Bowman Gray, can fix a lot of things for a lot of race teams. So what do you do now if you're Sergeant? 50 laps to go. You've been behind the 34 all night. Now he's gapping you. Yeah, and... This is a tough position to be. This is where you can maybe start overdriving a little bit too much. You know, you start to abuse your brakes. Oh, we've got a big Austin wreck Hill here. and William Byron. As soon as we talk about Byron not getting into trouble, he's around, and Austin Hill is as well. Dave, I think you jinxed him a little bit there, but I think this is a product maybe of us. We saw the 22 was going backwards, and those guys behind him probably were getting pretty impatient, including the five or the nine of William Byron, and, and this is how things sometimes end up to see how this all happened. The field's squirting by now as we're under caution again here at Bowman Gray Stadium. Championship leader William Byron in a spin with Austin Hill who was going backwards through the field. Yeah, you can see a little bit of damage there. William Byron, I mean, once again, as I said before, you know, as long as that 
that the bodywork isn't touching the tire, and then once you get going, it's not touching the tire, you're okay here at a place like this. Aerodynamics don't mean anything, really. So I think, you know, in that sense, they're all right, but they're most likely a lap down now, and this is a bad position to be. Let's see what happened. Turns one and two. Yeah, so he just... A little impatient there. The 22 looked like he was definitely struggling. Ooh, Jay Beasley got into as well. And, and that's what we were talking about. You know, the 22 was struggling either with getting through the center or just not being able to get back to the throttle. And those guys, having been so close together, got a little impatient. William tried to move and pry out of the way to kind of slip under him. And when he did it, he just got they spun around a little too quick. And the 42 there behind him, Jay Beasley got in the back of him. And we ended up with a big spin. Trouble for the championship leader here at Bowman Gray. We'll be back with more. There's not a bad seat in the house at Bowman Gray Stadium, and they have seen some action here tonight. The field under caution for the spin between William Byron, the championship leader, and Austin Hill in the 22. They will start near the rear of this field as Scott Heckert and Dalton Sargent once again get prepared to bring them to green. Haley and Beasley in row two, followed by Galding and Amos. We're green again at Bowman Gray. Not as good a jump for Scott Heckert there, but effective. He got the lead once again. He's pulling away, and I think that's really important for Dalton Sargent to be able to slot in there right in front of J.J. Haley. He did, and now we're back to those two fighting for the lead once again. Single file back to the sixth position where we find the sixth car. What a good run for Devin Amos. Yes, absolutely. And Jay Beasley there, who was involved in that latest wreck a little bit. He's got a crunched up hood there. As long as you can see over it, he's doing a really great job getting in the top five. Further back, you can perhaps pick out the championship leader, Byron, and the 22 of Austin Hill. This is a battle for 10th between Rico Abreu and Kaz Grala, who we talked about earlier in the broadcast. Yeah, and Kaz Grala was one who tested here. He's probably hoping to have a little bit better night after that. And Rico just gets Ooh. into his bumper, trying to rough him up a little bit, move him out of the way. They both have those new composite bodies. You can see both of them have taken a little bit of a beating, but they're going forward. There you see Hill in the 22. That's where we find him. Let's take a look at Grella there. He was involved in an incident on lap 73. He's moved back toward the top, now in the top 10. Yeah, that's good. That's you know exactly what you need to do. You need to come back from the, ooh, get in the back of Kenzie Russ in there a little bit. So they're, they're getting impatient here with 40 to go, I think. You know, we're starting to see where these guys and girls are going out there and saying, you know what, I need to get every place I can get because there's very little time left. Grala trying to come back from Iowa where he had a terrible day, three flat tires and an alternator failure. So he's trying to make his comeback here at Bowen Gray tonight. There's William Byron after that spin. Yeah, and you know the thing about that car is it actually looks pretty good for the size of the wreck there in there and getting hit from both ends. But being a lap down, I'm not sure quite what he can do from here on out. He just needs to maybe hope for a bunch of cautions and then get back up there. We heard Derek report earlier, use up the parts and pieces from these bodies as next year they will bring the new bodies into the field even more. 2017 mandatory that everybody runs the chassis and the body that NASCAR is mandating for the future of the K&N Pro Series. Definitely a good move. And as you see those composite bodies, have, uh, they've stood up to the test tonight. And if there's any place that will test that body's durability, it's here at Bowman Gray. A clean view right now for the leaders. Scott Heckert has not given up the lead once tonight to teammate Dalton Sargent or teammate J.J. Haley. And he's got no traffic to deal with right now, so there's that rhythm, Parker, that you were talking about before. Yeah, he keeps getting into it very, very well. He just he's has a car that I consistently see just cutting through the center well, and when it does that, it makes it easy to get off the corner because it's straight. When you do that, you protect your tires, and he has the dominant run he's having tonight. Kenzie Rustin in the throwback Sunoco scheme trying to keep Kaz Grala behind her. She's got the ninth position. Grala's trying to grab it. Oh. Big contact in four that time. Yeah, I was just going to say, I've noticed Kaz is really driving in the corners deep. You know, Kenzie's maybe being a little bit easier on the entry, and he's getting right to her bumper, and she's getting a better drive off. And that's she's probably doing the right thing. He's being a little bit aggressive, and, and we see the, them getting together there in the front of that three car, showing the wounds of driving in so deep. Two different ways to drive the track, and they don't always match. Exactly, and that's where you end up with that little bumper tag they've got here. You, know, you see the three fall back a little bit, might catch up as we get to the center here, and slides out, but you know what? That doesn't always work, and it only works really for a short amount of time before you really abuse those tires. Cascarella, only 16 years old, making his name now in the K&N Pro Series East. Driving for Ben Kennedy, by the way. Good program there for Kaz. Absolutely. Definitely a good program. They won a couple races here. In this Looks series. to the inside, and boy, backs off just in time as Kenzie takes her position. Yeah, he's really forcing the issue. She knows he's there for sure, and 
I think, you know, at this point, she's doing the right thing. She's not washing her mirror. She's driving her, her race, her track, and hoping that, you know, he protects and does and makes the right decisions, and she'll hold on to it. <laughs> not sure if she agrees with that decision. You can feel, <laughs> other than the bumping, but you can also feel a driver there, can't you? Yes, you definitely can. You can hear it. You can feel it. The bumping, I mean, that really helps to feel it, obviously. <laughs> you see her getting sideways off the corner. And, I, you know, at this point, Sometimes, especially in these types of races, you might just want to let that three go because you might end up facing backwards at some point here of how aggressive he's been. He really wants this position. And now to the inside. is going to get it. Moved her aside just a little bit coming off the corner. And that's a technique that these young drivers can learn on these short tracks, isn't it, Parker? Yeah. You know, it's, when you see that and it goes so well and smoothly, you say, okay, that's good. That's, that's what you need to do. And as you get into the higher series, being able to use that finesse, not just run into someone, but finesse them out of the way, that would be very important to be able to go through fields at short tracks without ruffling too many feathers. Rico Abreu moves through as well in the 98 car. He is now in 10th. Rustin back to 11th. Haven't missed anything up front. It's Scott Heckert and Dalton Sargent. Heckert now moving by David Garbo Jr. in that 31, trying to put him another lap down. Yeah, it's 34. It's talked about it time and time again. It's just been dominant. Look at it. Just, he, he, it looks like he's on a Sunday drive at some times here. You know, I think the 51 has done a great job to stay intact to them, but just hasn't shown the speed to get up there. Less than 25 to go at Bowman Gray Stadium. It's now a Saturday night short track feature for Scott Heckert to win. Scott Heckert in the 34 has led all night long here at Bowman Gray Stadium in the NASCAR Hall of Fame 150. It's less than 10 laps to go now for him to keep the lead, and he's opened up a huge gap over second, Parker. Yeah, this 34 has just continued to show his dominance, really driven away through traffic, made the right decisions, kept his car clean, takes the lead of this race, and really looks without incident here going on to win this one tonight. And Sargent, who entered tonight eighth in points, sometimes just better for him to say, I'll take a good points night and move on. Absolutely. I mean, this is one of those places that if you can come out here in the top three with a somewhat clean race car, you've had a great night, I feel like. And especially for Dalton Sargent, who needed a good run to get back on track and get back on track for the points. This is a night for him to take and savor and say, okay, we took a second place race car and we finished second. Scott Heckert, the Ridgefield, Connecticut driver, continues to pace. Championship leader William Byron involved in a spin mid-race. He entered tonight as the series points leader, but not by a lot. No, and he's going to take a hit in the points tonight after that incident. And a little bit of a product that he'll hopefully take home and learn from the saying, you know what, maybe if I was just a little bit more patient there at that 22 of Austin Hill, there was still a lot of time to go at this racetrack. I might have found myself with a solid top five and extending that points lead, or at least keeping a large chunk of it. Austin Hill in the 22, who was involved with Byron. You see that lap 99 incident. He's driving back through as well. But both of those drivers will look toward another race to make their night. Yeah, it's one of those what could have been sort of feelings for those guys. Four to go this time by for Scott Heckert. He's won in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East before, but they were on road courses, Parker. Now he's showing his prowess on the oval. Yeah, I know Scott very well. We grew up together, racing go-karts together, and he was always really good on road courses. As that's where we started. But ovals for him, you know, is something of a learning curve. But tonight he's showing that that learning curve is coming to a abrupt end as he's hopefully going to put in victory lane. And as we were talking about Heckert, Dalton Sargent with a final charge. It'll be two to go this time by, but the 51 is closing on the 34. Absolutely, but that 34 has been on the pole tonight and led every lap like a pitcher in baseball. He could possibly throw a perfect game. Down the back stretch, coming to the white flag this time. Heckard in heavy traffic. Sargent just six car lengths behind. This is where Scott needs to be really smart here with the heavy track in front of him. I know the 51 is coming, but his spotter's telling him that. He's trying to do all the right things and protect that gap. Sargent within a couple of car lengths as they go down the back stretch. One car in front of the leader, but it's not going to be enough. Scott Heckard is going to win at Bowman Gray Stadium. An absolutely dominant victory by that 34. Really, really impressive night. The 51 of Dalton Sargent, a great last few laps charge. Teammate trying to catch teammate, but he didn't have anything for Heckert, and he certainly didn't have track position. It was going to be tough to get by him, even if he did catch him. Yeah, he was going to have to rough him up to get by, and I just don't think the team would have been too happy with that one, Dave. Third career victory for Scott Heckert here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We'll talk to him when we come back. 
The NASCAR Hall of Fame 150 is over. The winner is Scott Heckert. There was some bumping, there was some banging, but Heckert had the fastest car in the best position. Derek. Scott Heckert is a road course specialist, but tonight he will write his name into the history books at the Bowman Gray Stadium. He dominated tonight, and Scott, how gratifying is it to finally get a win on an oval after all of your wins are on road courses? Oh, that's, that's great. I mean, we, we've had it coming for a long time. These guys are awesome. Um, yeah, it's just uh, we had a perfect car. And we've had it before, just hadn't had the chips fall away. And just these guys prepared another one and uh, avoided the carnage of Bowman Gray. How much pressure was on you tonight knowing the rich history of this car and all the wins that it had? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm pleasure to add another. I hope, uh, you know, in five years they're talking about, oh, Scott Hecker drove that thing and uh, still going to victory lane. And I had a lot of pressure just because I knew in practice this was a great car. And, uh, you know, at some point it's up to the driver. And uh, these guys, you know, left it up to me. And that's what I asked for. Thanks. Scott Heckert wins one tonight at the Bowman Gray Stadium. Yeah, like any great athlete, he wanted it in his hands. He went out there and he took what was his. That was a victory in a really impressive fashion. You can put his name in the books. Scott Heckert, the winner here tonight. Dalton Sargent with a good run. Jay Beasley in fourth ties his career best. Yeah, and two drivers we focused on earlier tonight, Devin Amos and Kaz Grawl having good nights as well. Kaz coming back from that incident earlier in the race. Yeah, had a spin and finished it as he did. A couple of drivers who are disappointed tonight, including William Byron, 15th place for the championship leader coming into tonight's event. Derek is with second place, Dalton Sargent. Well, Dalton Sargent started third at the drop of the green tonight, comes home in that second spot, but how important was it to have that inside line? It was so important. You know, this track, it really seems like you get shuffled back if you start there on the outside. Luckily enough, though, we were able to, able to get in on every restart, so it really played into our advantage on being able to hold off the five. But uh, overall, I just have to say thank you to everybody at Harry Scott Motorsports, Justin Marks. They gave us a great 51 called Chevy tonight, and uh, the car was just really great. You know, we just didn't have enough to get to the 34, but uh, overall, good points run for the night, and uh, really happy to get a, a good finish after some of our bad streaks. That's what I was just going to ask you. You've had some bad luck in the last couple of weeks. Do you think that now you're turning the corner? I hope so. You know, everything just seems to be like bad luck. Had a flat at Iowa and, uh, you know, just been struggling a little bit. But uh, I think the second place finish is going to give us a boost of confidence for the entire team uh, to just go out there and run better. Second place for Dalton Sargent. That's definitely right, Dave. You know, when you can get a good run like that after a couple bad ones, you can start moving forward with positive momentum. Austin Hill and Kyle Benjamin gained a point, but with that victory, Scott Heckert gained 19 points on championship leader William Byron. Derek is standing by now with J.J. Haley. Well, H. Scott Motorsports pretty much dominated tonight here at the Bowman Gray Stadium. J.J. Haley comes home in third. How was the run from your seat tonight? Looked like it was a really tough race. Yeah, the Madhouse is definitely a different environment. Uh, you know, H. Scott with Justin Marks bring dominant cars. Uh, we just put a whipping on all them other boys. So, uh, we had a good race. I mean, I'm, I'm happy the car's clean. That was uh, most important to finish, and uh, finishing my best career finish ever is uh, pretty special to me. So we'll uh, build on this and uh, hopefully have a good run next week. How important was track position tonight with all that traffic? Uh, you know, qualifying up front was really key. Uh, you saw Greg Gawning and Jay Beasley make their way up, but uh, it definitely took a while, and they just didn't have it for me. So uh, track position is, is key at a short track like this. And uh, I'm really, really happy with the results. J.J. Haley comes home third on the podium tonight. And he's right, Parker. His team did put a whipping on him. Yeah, absolutely. But J.J. Haley himself actually really did a great job of being patient and, and being on the outside as many times as he was. He was able to get to the inside and get a solid top three finish. The West Series goes to what used to be a quarter mile next. It's now the 3 8 mile Shasta Speedway. Check your local listings for that k Pro Series West event coming up. Well, the night started with Scott Heckert on the pole. He had a great qualifying lap. He led the field to green, and he led the entire race. But it wasn't without incident. As Heckert went for the win, Holloman went around, Beasley got through, Galding was safe, except for a little body damage, but that's normal at the Madhouse. William Byron got into trouble, but hangs on to the points lead as the series heads to Langley Speedway next. Scott Heckert, checkered flag in hand. We thank you for watching here on NBCSN. For Derek Pernisiglio and Parker Kligerman, I'm Dave Burns saying congrats to Scott. We'll see you next time.